and bring the Christmas tree in. Where should I put it, ma'am? Here? Would you like anything else? No, thank you. I have all I want. Alan? Yes, ma'am? The decorations? Very well, ma'am. Come, we shall sit and be cozy. 
It has been much too long since we last saw one another. What a thoughtless creature I am chattering away. My poor dear Christine, do forgive me. You are a widow. Yes, a few years now. Yes, I saw it in the papers. I assure you, Christine, I meant to write, but... No, I quite understand you. It was very bad of me, Christine. Poor thing, how you must have suffered, and he left you nothing. No. And no children. No. So you are quite alone. How dreadfully sad that must be. I have three lovely children. You will meet them shortly. But now you must tell me all about you. No, no. I'd like to hear about you. No, no, no. You must begin. But I must tell you. We've just had a great piece of good luck. What is it? My husband has been made manager of the bank. What good fortune. Tremendous. How pleased we are. Next week in the new year, he will have a big salary. We can live quite differently. We can do just as we like. It will be splendid to have heaps of money and no worries. It would be delightful to have what one needs. Not only what one needs, but heaps and heaps of money. Nora, you always were a great spendthrift. That's what Torvald says. But Nora is not as silly as you think. We have not been in a position to waste money. You know Torvald lost his office right after we married? He felt dreadfully ill. The doctor said it was necessary for him to go south. Yes, I remember. You spent a whole year in Italy, didn't you? See, it saved Torvald's life. It was no easy matter. It cost a tremendous lot of money, much more than we had ourselves. I must tell you, we got the money from Papa. I see. It was around that time your father had died, wasn't it? Yes. And think of it. I couldn't go and nurse him. I had my poor, sick Torvald to look after. My dear, kind Papa. I never saw him again. That was a sad time. How sad. But then you went off to Italy. Yes. We had the money from Papa, and the doctors insisted that we go. And your husband? He came back quite well. Sound as a bell. We are all healthy and strong. Christine, it's good to be alive and happy. But how horrid of me. I'm talking of nothing but my own affairs. You mustn't be angry with me. Tell me, how is your mother? These last few years have been difficult. My mother bedridden. And with no money for my husband's passing, I had to turn my hand to whatever I could to make money. These last few years have been one long working day. But now my mother is gone. She needs me no more. What a relief you must feel. No, indeed my life is unspeakably empty, and work in our little town has become harder to come by. If only I could get the good luck to find some regular work, office work of some kind. But Christine, that is so frightfully trying, and you already look so tired. You had far better go away. I have no papa to give me money for a journey, Nora. Oh, don't be angry with me. It is you that mustn't be angry with me, Nora. <coughs> when you told me of your happy fortune, your husband's new position at the bank, I was delighted, but not so much on your account as my own. Oh, you mean perhaps Torvald could get you something to do? Yes, that is what I was thinking. He must, Christine. Just leave it to me. I will broach the subject very cleverly. How kind of you, Nora. It is doubly kind of you, for you know so little of the burdens and troubles of life. So little? My dear, small household cares and that sort of thing. You ought not to be so superior, Christine. No, dear. You are just like the others. They all think that I am incapable of anything truly serious. Come, come. That I have gone through nothing in this world. You look down upon me, Christine, but you ought not to. Indeed. It was I who saved Torvald's life. Saved? How? Papa didn't give us anything for our trip to Italy. It was I who procured the money. You? Yes. What do you think of that? But Nora, how could you possibly? A wife could not borrow money without her husband's consent. Oh, if it is a wife who has any head for business. I don't understand. There is no need you should. 
I never said I borrowed the money. But without your husband's knowledge? The doctor said my husband's life was in danger. I suggested to Torvald that he might take a loan, but that made him angry. I only knew he must be saved, and so I devised a way out of the difficulty. And did your husband ever know the money did not come from your father? No. Papa died just at that time. And have you never told your secret to your husband? Good heavens, no! How humiliating it would be for Torvald with his manly independence to know that he owed me anything. Now, what do you think of my small household cares? It has been by no means easy for me. In business, there is something called quarterly interest, and it is so dreadfully difficult to manage. I've had to save a little here and a little there wherever I could. So it has all come out of your own necessaries of life? Of course. I was the one responsible for it. Whenever Torvald gave me money for new dresses and things, I have never spent more than half of it. I always buy the simplest and cheapest things. So how much have you been able to pay off? I can't tell you exactly, but with Torvald's new position at the bank, I am free. Free from care. Free to be able to play with the children. Free to be able to keep the house beautifully and have everything just as Torvald likes it. Oh, it is a wonderful thing to be alive. The bell. I had better go. No, don't go. <coughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Dr. Ronk. I beg your pardon by disturbing you. No, not at all. Come in, Dr. Ronk. Christine, this is our greatest friend who visits us every day. Dr. Ronk, I would like to introduce you to a dear, dear childhood friend, Mrs. Lind. Good afternoon, Mrs. Lind. Oh, do be careful. Some slight internal weakness? You must excuse me. I have been overworking myself. And I suppose you have come to town to rest in our hot springs. Actually, I've come to look for work. Is that a good cure for overworking oneself? <coughs> One must live, Dr. Ronk. Yes, that seems to be the general opinion. Look here, Dr. Ronk. You know you want to live. Certainly. However wretched I may feel physically, I want to prolong that in as long as possible. It's the same for all my patients. Shall we three indulge in a... Macaroon or two? Macaroons! I thought they were forbidden in this house. Yes, but Christine gave what? me. What? I don't be alarmed. You couldn't know that Torvald had forbidden them, but bah! Dr. Ronk? <laughs> Christine, you must have one too. And I shall have one. Or at most two. <laughs> Dear, let me introduce you to my dear childhood friend, Christine. Christine. Lind, dear, Mrs. Lind. Christine has taken the long journey to see you. No, I... Christine is tremendously clever at bookkeeping and frightfully anxious to work under some clever man so as to perfect herself. Very sensible, Mrs. Lind. And when she heard you had been appointed manager of the bank, the news was telegraphed, you know, she traveled here as quickly as she could. Torvald, I'm sure you'll be able to find something for Christine, for my sake, won't you? It is not altogether impossible. I presume you are a widow, Mrs. Lee. Yes. And have had some experience of bookkeeping? Yes, a fair amount. Ah, uh, it is likely I may be able to find something for you. What did I tell you? How am I to thank you? There is no need. But right now, you must excuse me. Torvald, I will join you. Yes, do. Don't be long, Torvald, dear. About an hour, not more. Oh, Christine, are you leaving too? Yes, I must. Goodbye, Nora, dear. And many, many thanks.
Ron loves you too. Hello, my little babies. How fresh you look. And hello, little Bob. door was ajar. I suppose someone forgot to shut it. My husband is out, Mr. Coxhead. I know. What did you want? A word with you. With me. Children, go on with Anne. Mama, I'm scared. What? No, Ivar, don't be scared. Mama. No, Emmy, darling, the strange man won't do Mama any harm. When he is gone, we shall all practice some more. Scary man. <laughs> Hot dancing, Mr. Weird Man. It is not the first of the month. No, it is Christmas Eve. And it will depend on yourself what sort of a Christmas you will spend. What do you mean? I saw your husband going down the street. Yes. We had a rather unsettling conversation. Yes. He had just parted ways with a lady. Yes. May I make so bold as to ask if it was a Mrs. Lynn? It was. She is a great friend of yours. She is. I knew her too, once upon a time. I am aware. Is Mrs. Lynn to have an appointment at the bank? What right do you have to question me, Mr. Croxstaff? You, one of my husband's employees. Yes, Mrs. Lynn is to have an appointment. And it was I who pleaded her case. Sometimes one has influence. Because one is a woman, it does not necessarily follow that. Mr. Krogstad, 
You really should be careful to avoid offending anyone who... Who has influence. Exactly. Mrs. Helmer, you'll be so good as to use your influence on my behalf. What? You'll be so kind as to see that I'm allowed to keep my position at the bank. Who proposes to take it away from you? Your husband. I assure you. I advise you to use your influence to prevent that. But, Mr. Crockstad, I have no influence. Haven't you? You just said yourself. Listen to me, Mrs. Helmer. I am prepared to fight for my small post at the bank as if I were fighting for my life. So it seems. It is not only for the sake of the money. Indeed, that weighs least with me in the matter. My position is this. I dare say you know, like everyone else, that once, many years ago, I was guilty of an indiscretion. I may have heard something of the kind. The matter was resolved, but after, every way I turned, society seemed to be closed to me. So I took to the business that you and I find ourselves in. I had to do something to earn money, and honestly, I don't think I've been one of the worst. But now I must cut myself free from all that. I must think of my sons. My wife has passed on, and my sons are growing up. For their sake, I must try and win back as much respect as I can in this town. My post at the bank was the first step up for me, and now your husband is going to kick me downstairs again, into the mud. You must believe me, Mr. Crockstad. It is not in my power to help you. That it is, because you haven't the will, but I have means to compel you. You don't mean that you will tell my husband that I owe you money. Suppose I were to tell him. Well, do it then, and it will be worse for you. My husband will see for himself what a scoundrel you are, and you certainly won't get your post back then. Listen to me, Mrs. Helmer. I think you have a very bad memory or you know very little of business. What do you mean? When your husband was ill, you came to me and asked to borrow money. Yes. Which I promised to lend you, on the security of a bond which I drew up. Which I signed? Yes, but below your signature, there were a few lines constituting your father a surety for the bond. Those lines your father should have signed. Should? He did sign them. <coughs> I had left the date blank. And that is to say, your father should himself have noted the date on the paper which he signed. Do you remember that? I remember. And you gave me the bond with your father's signature. And I gave you the money. Yes. That must have been a very trying time for you, Mrs. Helmer. It was. Your father was very ill, wasn't he? Yes. He died soon afterwards. Yes. Tell me, Mrs. Helmer. <coughs> Can you by any chance remember what day your father died? Papa died on the 29th of September. That is correct. And as that is so, there is a discrepancy which I cannot account for. A discrepancy? A discrepancy, Mrs. Helmer. The fact that your father signed this bond three days after his death. Your father died on the 29th of September, but look here. Father has dated his signature the 2nd of October. It is a discrepancy, isn't it? It is a remarkable thing, too, that the words are not written in your father's handwriting, but in one that I think you know. Was it your father who signed his name here? <coughs> no, it was not. It was I that wrote Papa's name. Are you aware that is a dangerous confession? In what way? Why did you not have your father sign the bond? It was impossible. Papa was so ill. It would have been better for you to have given up your trip abroad. But the trip was to save my husband's life. Did it never occur to you that you were committing fraud on me by forging your father's signature? Mrs. Helmer, you evidently do not realize what it is that you are guilty of. But I can assure you that my own one false step, which lost me all my reputation, was the exact same as what you have done. Forgery and fraud. My husband was dying. The law cares nothing about motive. Then it is a foolish law. Foolish or not, it is the law by which you will be judged if I produce this paper in court. I don't believe it. 
is a wife not to be allowed to save her husband's life. Do as you please. But let me tell you this. If I lose my position a second time, you shall lose yours with me. begging you to say a good word for him. Yes. Nora, how could you to have talk with a man like that and give him any sort of promise and to tell a lie in the bargain? A lie? You just told me that no one had been here. My little songbird must never do that again. A songbird must have a clean beak to chirp with. No false notes. We will speak no more about it. Torvald? Yes? I'm looking forward to the fancy dress ball the day after tomorrow. Are you very busy, Torvald? Well... What are all those papers? Thank business. Already? I've got the authority to... I've got the authority to... <laughs> make the changes in staff so as to have everything in order for the new year. Then that was why Krogstad... Tell me, was it really something very bad that this... Krogstad was guilty of. Fraud. He forged someone's signature. Isn't it possible he was driven to do it by necessity? There is no excuse for that sort of behavior, Nora. The end does not justify the means. The man is morally diseased. And his children. That's the most terrible part of it all. How? Because lies poison and infect the life of a home. Each breath his children take in such a house are full of the germs of evil. Are you sure of that? My dear, most everyone who has gone bad in life has had a deceitful mother. Why do you only say mother? It seems most commonly to be the mother's influence. Though a bad father like Krogstad would have the same result. That is why my sweet little Nora must promise me not to plead his cause. Give me your hand on it. Come, come. There, now that's settled. I must go read through some of these before dinner. My precious songbird. begging to be allowed to come into Mama. No, no, don't let them come into me. You stay with them, Anne. Very well, ma'am. Pray 
of my children, poisoned my home. It's not true. It can't possibly be true. into a hundred thousand pieces. What an idea. It can easily be put in order. Just a little patience. Yes. How are the children? The little souls are playing with their Christmas present, but... Do you think they would ever forget their mother if she went away? Good heavens, went away? Anne, dear, I want to ask you something. How could you have the heart to leave your own child to be raised by strangers. I was obliged to, ma'am. Yes, but how could you do it? You see, when a girl has got herself into trouble. Yes, I see. I suppose your daughter has quite forgotten you. No, indeed she hasn't. She wrote to me on her last birthday. If my little ones had no mother, I'm sure you would. What nonsense. Go in and play with the children, Anne. Tomorrow you shall see how charming I shall look. I'm sure there will be no one as charming as you at the fancy dress ball, ma'am. If only I could be sure Crockstead won't do it. Will today be the day he comes to tell Torvald? I mustn't think about it. Oh, what lovely, lovely gloves. Out of my thoughts, out of my thoughts. Oh, Christine, there was no one else out there, is there? No. How good of you to come. Yes. How fortunate. Christine, I need your help. Let us sit here on the sofa. Look here, tomorrow evening there is to be a fancy dress ball, and Torvald wants me to go as a Neapolitan fisher girl and dance the tarantella we learned in Italy. I see. But look here, the dress is all so torn and I haven't any idea. We will easily put that right. It's only some of the trimming come unsewn here and there. Oh, it is so nice of you, Christine, my dear childhood friend. 
Tell me, is Dr. Wrong always as depressed as he was yesterday? No. Yesterday it was quite noticeable. I must tell you that he suffers from consumption of the spine. Poor creature. His father was a horrible man who committed all sorts of excesses, and that is why Dr. Wrong has been sickly from childhood. The sins of the father. Does Dr. Wrong come here every day? Yes, every day. He is Torvald's most intimate friend and a great friend of mine, too. And He's one of the family. Is he a man of, of means? Yes, he is. And has no one to provide for? No, no one. Listen to me, Nora. You ought to make an end of it with Dr. Wrong. Ought to make an end? Do you suppose I don't know who lent you the money? How could you think such a thing? A friend of ours? Something has happened to you since yesterday, Nora. What is it? When you pay off a debt, you get your bond back, don't you? Yes, of course. And can tear it into a hundred thousand pieces. Hush. Torvald's come home. Do you mind going into the children? Torvald can't bear to see dressmaking going on. Certainly, but I'm not going away until this matter has been settled. Torvald, dear, I have missed you so much. Yes. Was that the dressmaker? No, Christine is helping me with my dress. You will see, I shall look quite smart tomorrow at the fancy dress ball. Are you going into work? Yes. Torvald? Yes. If your little squirrel were to ask you for something very, very prettily, would you do it? I should like to hear what it is first. Your skylark would trip about in every room with her song rising and falling. Nora, you surely don't mean that request you made to me this morning. Yes, dear, you must let Crockstab keep his position at the bank. It is his position I have arranged Miss Flynn to have. Yes, but you could just as well dismiss some other clerk instead of Crogstad. This is simply incredible obstinacy. Because you choose to give Crogstad a thoughtless promise to speak on his behalf, I'm expected to. That is not the reason. It is for your own sake. You have told me yourself of his corrupt moral character. I am frightened to death of him. We ought to be happy here in our peaceful home, you and I and the children, Torvald. It's already known at the bank that I need to dismiss Crogstead. Is it to go about now that the new bank manager has changed his mind at his wife's bidding? What if it did? Do you expect me to make myself look ridiculous before my entire staff? To let people think I'm a man to be swayed by outside influence? <clears throat> Wonderful, 
Good day, Dr. Rock. Is it? What do you mean by that? There's no use lying to oneself. I'm the most wretched of all my patients. Within a month, I shall lie rotting in the churchyard. What an ugly thing to say. The thing itself is cursedly ugly. Oh, Dr. Ronk. The horrors have begun. When my time has come, I shall send you my card for Black Hawthorne. And then you will know it is the end. The end of Dr. Ronk. You are quite absurd today, Dr. Ronk. And I need you to be in good humor. Death stalking me. Rubbish. Do talk of something <laughs> cheerful. Oh, it is a laughing matter. Quite comical. My poor innocent spine has to suffer from my own father's youthful indiscretions. I suspect he was too partial to truffles. Yes. Oysters, too, I suppose. Oysters, of course. And heaps of champagne. It is a shame that all these nice things should take their revenge on our bones. Especially that they should revenge themselves on the unlucky bones of those who have not enjoyed them. Yes, the saddest part of all. Mm -hmm. Why did you smile? No, it was you that laughed. No, it was you that smiled, Dr. Rong. You rascal. I am in a silly mood today. So it seems. Dr. Rong. Death mustn't take you away from Torvald and me. There's a loss you easily recover from. Those who are gone are soon forgotten. Bless my soul, how unreasonable you are. Be nice now, Dr. Ronk. Tomorrow you shall see how beautifully I shall dance at the fancy dress ball. And you can imagine I'm doing it all for you. <coughs> and for Torvald too, of course. Dr. Ron, come sit down here. I will show you something. Silk stocking. Aren't they lovely? No, no, you must only look at the legs. Oh, well, I guess you may have leave to look at the legs, too. <coughs> And what other nice things am I allowed to look at? Not a single thing more. <laughs> there. That's to punish you for being so naughty. Now, if I were to ask you for a... No. Yes? For a tremendously big favor. But you make me so happy. But you don't know what it is yet. Tell me. I can't. It is something out of all reason. The bigger the thing, the better. <laughs> well, it is something you must help me to prevent. You know how deeply Torvald loves me. Nora, do you think he's the only one? The only one? The only one to love you. <laughs> Dr. Rock, that was really horrid of you. To love you? No, but to go and tell me. What do you mean? To think you could be so clumsy, Dr. Rock. You were getting on so nicely. And what of the favor? You can't do nothing for me now. Perhaps I better go. Or ever? No, indeed. You must come here just as before. Torvald can't do without you. And you? I'm always tremendously pleased when you visit. You are a riddle to me.
If you please, ma'am. Oh! Is there anything wrong? No, no, not in the least. But you must go and keep Torvald company. And he's waiting. Yes, ma'am. But didn't you tell him that no one was in? Yes, but it was no use. He won't go away? No, he says he won't leave until he has seen you, ma'am. Well, let him in. But quietly. Alan, you mustn't say a thing about this to anyone. Yes, ma'am. I understand. Speak low. My husband is home. No matter about that. What do you want of me? An explanation. Make haste, then. I have got my dismissal. I couldn't prevent it. I fought as hard as I could. Does your husband love you so little? <laughs> I make bold to suppose you have a clearer idea than yesterday of what it is that you have done. What is it you want of me? Only to see how you were. I have been thinking about you all day. A man like me, even he has a little of what is called feeling. Show it then. Think of my children. Has your husband thought of mine? I want to tell you that you need not take this matter seriously. There will be no public accusation made on my part. It will remain a secret between us three. My husband must never know anything about it. I have a letter for your husband in my pocket. Tear it up. I will get you your money. Excuse me, Mrs. Helmer, but I no longer want your money. What do you want, then? I want to rehabilitate myself, Mrs. Helmer. Your husband must help me. For quite some time, I have not had a hand in anything dishonorable. Amid all that time, I have been struggling. I was content to work my way up, step by step. But now that I am turned out, I am driven to desperate measures. You and your husband are forcing my hand. I must not lose my post at the bank. Your husband must reinstate me. That he will never do. He will. I know him. He dare not protest. It would require too much courage. Mr. Krogstad, a little respect for my husband. Understand me, Miss Selmer. I'll never part with your bond, so that if the thought of it had driven you to any desperate resolution. It has? If you had it in your mind to run away from your home. I had? Or something worse. How could you know that? Most of us think of that at first. I did too, but I had it the courage. But how would you do it, Mrs. Helmer? Down into the cold, cold black water. Under the ice, perhaps? And then, in the spring, to float up to the surface, unrecognizable, with your hair fallen out. You can't frighten me. People don't do such things, Mrs. Helmer. Besides, what use would it be? As long as I hold the bond, I have him completely in my power. Do not do anything foolish. When Torvald has my letter, I shall expect a message from him. Goodbye, Mrs. Helmer. He's going. He is standing outside. He is hesitating. He's putting the letter in the box, oh no, no! It's impossible. There it is, in the letter box. There is no hope for us now. There, I can't see anything more to mend. Would you like to try it off? Christine, come here. What's the matter, dear? Come here! Do you see that letter in the letter box? Yes, the letter is from Krogstad. Nora, it was Krogstad that lent me the money. Yes, and now Torvald would know all about it. 
Believe me, Nora, that is best for both of you. It is worse, much worse. I committed fraud. I forged Papa's signature. Good heavens! Christine, you must be my witness. Your witness? What do you mean? If I should go out of my mind, Nora, if anything should happen, anything that might prevent me being here. Nora, you are quite distracted. Oh, Christine, a wonderful thing is going to happen, but it is terrible. I don't understand all this. If it should happen that Torvald wanted to take on the responsibility, wanted to take all the blame, you understand? Yes. You must be my witness. That is not true. I tell you, Torvald has never known about my crime. I alone did the whole thing. Remember that. I will indeed. I will go at once and see Krogstad. Do not go to him! He will harm you! You must remember, there was once a time he'd gladly do anything for my sake. It's no use. It's hopeless. The letter is there, lying in the box. And your husband keeps the key? Yes, always. Krogstad must ask for his letter back. I will be back as soon as I can. have come. No, Torvald, don't. Why not? There is nothing there. Let me look, my little Skylar. I won't dance tomorrow if I don't practice with you. Come, sit down. Criticize me. Correct me as you play. With great pleasure. Now play for me and I will dance. Seven 
hours until midnight, and then four and 20 hours until the next midnight. Then the tarantella will be over, 24 and seven. 31 hours to live. from you at home. What does this mean? It is absolutely necessary that I should talk with you. And is it absolutely necessary that it should be here? Come in. We are quite alone. The maid is asleep. The helmers are at the fancy dress ball. Now, Nils, let us have a talk. Can we two have anything to talk about? We have a great deal to talk about. I shouldn't have thought so. No, you've never understood me. Was there anything else to understand, except what was obvious to all the world? A heartless woman jilts a man when she meets a man with more money. Do you believe I'm as heartless as all that? Didn't you? I could do nothing else. I had to break with you. You must not forget I had my mother to take care of. I could not wait for you. You had nothing, Nils. And after the incident, your prospects seemed hopeless. When I lost you, it was as if the ground went from under my feet. Look at me. I am a shipwrecked man, clinging to a bit of wreckage. And I, a shipwrecked woman, I have no one to care for. It was your own choice. There was no other choice then. Well, what now? How would it be if we two shipwrecked people joined forces? What are you saying? What do you suppose brought me to town? Do you mean that you gave me a thought? I am quite alone in this world. My life is so dreadfully empty. There is not the least pleasure in working for oneself. Give me someone to live for. I don't trust that. You really, you know of my reputation. You know what they think of me. Yes. Christine, do you mean what you say? Yes, you do. I see it in your eyes. I want to be a mother to someone. Your children need a mother. We need each other. I know your true character. You're a good man, Nils. Christine, I, I shall find a way to clear myself in the eyes of the world. It's no use. You are not aware of the steps I have taken with the Helmers. Yes, I know. And in spite of that, you have the courage to... I know you were driven by despair. I can only undo what I have done. You cannot. Your letter is still there lying in the letterbox. I will ask for my letter back. No. Yes, of course I will. I will wait here until Helmer comes. 
I, I will tell him that he must give me my letter back, no. that he's not to... I have witnessed unholy things in this house. Helmer should know all about it. This unhappy secret must be disclosed. Very well. But there is one thing I must do in any case, and I shall do it at once. You must be quick. The Helmers will be home soon. I have never had such an amazing piece of good fortune in my life. <laughs> what good fortune! Someone to live for, someone to work for, a home. Fancy dress ball thought so. She danced her tear and tell her. And it was a tremendous success. But, whew, this room is hot. Excuse me. Well, I have had a talk with him. Yes, you must tell Torvald. I knew it. You have nothing to be afraid of as far as Krogstad is concerned. What? What are you saying, Christine? You must tell Torvald everything. I won't. Then the letter will. Hush! Well, have you admired her, Mrs. Lee? Yes, I have indeed. And now I must say good night. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Halbert. Good night, Nora. I hope you get home all right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Finally, she's gone. This woman is a frightful bore. Aren't you tired, Torvald? On the contrary, I feel extraordinarily lively. I am tired. I would like to go to sleep. Don't look at me like that. Why shouldn't I look to my dearest treasure? You mustn't say things like that to me. Not tonight. You still got the fairy tale in your blood, I see. Nora, do you know why I'm at a party with you? Why I speak so little to you? It is because I make believe that you are my secretly promised bride and that no one suspects there's a thing between us. And when we are leaving, I put your shawl over your beautiful young shoulders, your lovely neck, and I make believe that I'm taking you home for the first time, to be alone with you for the first time, quite alone with my shy little Skylark. Torfod, let me go. <laughs> You're joking. Am I not your husband? Who is it? It is I, Dr. Ron, and I'm serving you. Damned Dr. Rung. What does he want now? Wait a minute! <laughs> Dr. Rung! <laughs> How kind of you not to pass by our door. I thought I heard your voice and felt as if I should look in. You looked after yourself with a fancy dress ball quite well. Why well, shouldn't one enjoy everything as well? As much as one can, as long as one can. Especially the champagne! Ah, yes. Well, uh, Torvald, 
Will you give me a cigar, one of the dark Havanas? With the greatest pleasure. You know what this is? Yes. Is it true? It is true. What have you done? Torvald, dear, you must let me go. Do you understand what you've done? Yes, I understand. All these years, she who was my joy and my pride, a hypocrite, a liar, Worse, a criminal. You have ruined my future. I'm in the hands of this unscrupulous man. Krogstead can do what he likes of me. Give me any order he pleases. I dare not refuse. And I must sink to such miserable depths because of a thoughtless woman. When I am out of the way, you will be free. Please, no fine speeches. What good would it be? If you are out of the way, I shall be suspected of having been a party to your criminal action. Do you understand what you have done to me? Yes. It is so incredible. I can't take it in. I must try to appease him in some way. And as for you and me, it must appear as if everything between us were just as before, but only in the eyes of the world. You shall remain in my house, but I dare not allow you to bring up the children. I dare not trust them to you. What is that? Can he hide yourself? from him. Read it. I scarcely have the courage. Mm. 
Nora. Nora. Yes, it's true. I am saved. Nora, I am saved. You, of course, too. He sends your bond back. He says he regrets and repents that a happy change in his life. Oh, never mind what he says. First, I must destroy these hateful things. There, it doesn't exist any longer. But what is this? I understand you don't feel as if I could forgive you, but it's true. I should not be a man if this womanly helplessness did not give you double attractiveness in my eyes. I shall protect you like a hunted dove that has been saved from a hawk's claws. I shall bring peace to your poor little beating heart. Tomorrow you shall look upon this all quite differently. There is something so indescribable to a man in the knowledge that he has forgiven his wife. He has given her a new life. She has become both wife and child to him. Sit down, Torvald. What is this? This cold, set face. Mm. I don't understand you. No, you don't understand me. And I have never understood you either before tonight. What do you mean? In all the years we have known each other, we have never exchanged a word on any serious subject. I have been greatly wronged by you, Torvald. I have done nothing but love you. You have never loved me. You only thought it pleasant to be in love with me. What are you saying? It is perfectly true. You arrange everything according to your own taste, and so I have the same taste as you, or I pretend to. I'm not quite sure which, but it is so. Have you not been happy here? No, I have never been happy. I thought I was, but it has never really been so. Not, not happy? No, only Mary. And you have always been so kind to me. But our home has been nothing but a playroom. I have been your doll wife, and here the children have been my dolls. I thought it great fun when you played with me, just as they thought it great fun when I played with them. But the future shall be different. Playtime shall be over, and lesson time shall begin. Whose lessons? Mine? The children's? Both. Torvald, you are not the man to educate me into being the proper wife for you. I must educate myself. I must find out who I am. And that is why I am going to leave you. What did you say? I must be alone if I am to ever understand myself. Nora. I am going away. Tomorrow I shall go home to my old home. You would neglect your most sacred duties. What do you consider my most sacred duties? Your duties to your husband, your children. I have other duties just as sacred. What duties could those be? Duties to myself. Before all else, you are a wife, a mother. I don't believe that any longer. I believe that before all else, I am a human being, just as you are. Or I must try and become one. Torvald, I know quite well that most people would think you are right but I can no longer concern myself with what most people think. Have you no religion? I don't know what religion is. Have you no sense of right and wrong? I don't know. I only know that you and I see the world in a different light. The law is quite different from what I suppose. According to the law, a woman has no right to save her husband's life. I won't believe that. I'm going to see if I can make out who's right and who's wrong. The world or I? You are ill. You are delirious. 
You are out of your mind. I have never felt my mind so clear and certain as tonight. Then there is only one possible explanation. What? You do not love me anymore. No. How can you say that? With great pain, Torvald. For you have always been so kind to me, but I cannot help it. When the wonderful thing did not happen tonight, I saw that you were not the man I had thought you were. The wonderful thing? I don't understand. When Krogstad's letter was lying out there, never for a moment did I imagine that you would accept his conditions. I was certain you would say to him, publish the thing, make it known to the whole world. You would come forward, take everything upon yourself, and say to everyone that you were the guilty one. That was the wonderful thing for which I hoped and feared. Nora, no man would sacrifice his honor for the one he loves. It is a thing thousands of women have done. I can change. Perhaps. If your doll is taken away from you. No. Not now. Do not leave me. Wait until tomorrow. Goodbye, Torvald. I won't see the little ones. As I am now, I can be of no use to them. But someday, Nora, someday. How can I tell? I have no idea what is going to become of me. But? Torvald, I have heard that when a wife deserts her husband's house, as I am doing now, he is legally freed from all obligations. I set you free from all obligations. There must be perfect freedom on both sides. Here. Is my ring. Remove yours too. That too? That too. Now, it is all over. Think of me, Nora. I shall often think of you, the children, and of this house. Goodbye. Nora! Nora! Empty. Wonderful thing. 